What's up, guys? Welcome to Relate with Nate. I'm your host, Nate Siggers. This is our second episode here. Our first episode went really well. People all over the region talking about it, how great it was, how much they love me, how awesome I am. So we found some people on the street. My man Ian's out there talking to her now. We're going to see what they thought about the show. What do you think about Relate with Nate, man? Uh, I don't like it at all. What's wrong with it? I don't know. It's just weird. Relate with Nate. It's a talk show. Who's the host? Nate Seegers. Who the hell's Nate Seegers? Think about Relate with Nate. Ma'am, come back here, ma'am. <laughs> just uh-uh? <laughs> you think uh-uh about Relate with Nate? Uh-uh. Makes me hungry. Nate. Afraid to say. Why, why are you afraid? I'm afraid you won't like what I said. Hey, sir, what do you think about Relate with Nate? Relate with Nate. Is that the one where they uh, sell the storage lockers or? No. Different. Show. Yeah. Yeah, I watched it, but I missed it, but I can't believe I missed the whole episode of Spongebob Foot. Yeah, I've seen it, and I don't think the host can read either. What? The one with Nate? Man, ain't nobody got time for that. Wow, that's messed up. Even my kids hating on me. Well, anyway, we're still going to enjoy the show. We're going to have a good time. We have a couple great guests coming up. We have uh, Joey Eli and Eric Sherl, the starters of uh, the guys who started Clean Mingo. And we also have my good friend and co-worker, a running fool is what I like to call him, Alexis Batalda. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks Southern again for our uh, sponsorship. We have uh, Mr. Joey Eli and Eric Sherrill here. Eric's face is blurred due to the nature of his job, but uh, you ought to feel lucky because I have to look at him. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for coming on to the show. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Nate. Um, I've known these guys for a while. Eric, not as long as Joey. I've known Joey until our age a little bit, at least 30 years, I say. What do you think, Joey? Yeah. At least 30 years. I'm going into much more detail than yeah. that, though. My kids call me old all the time, but I still got my <laughs> boyish looks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the reason we have these guys here, they have they started a movement in our area that's it's really sweeping through the whole county. People are excited, talking about it. And uh, I really want to get these guys on the show and find out how and why they started this um, movement. Um, can you tell us more about what you have going on? Sure. Uh, Clean Mingo is sort of a mission that we began uh, as a way to bring people together. And it's sort of a cause. And what we realized was, um, even our, in our conversations that led to the birthing of this particular movement, uh, was that the people of our region are really a... Uh, a people that gather around causes. Uh, around Christmas time, um, you know, we got a lot of miners out of work now, but I've seen people come off of, uh, off of mine sites with truck loads of canned food uh, j just because their brothers are in need. And so the people of our region will, will gather around a cause. And so we were, when we considered unity uh, and why unity or how we could bring a people together. Uh, because as we look around today, even on your TV set this evening, what I found is division is everywhere. And, uh, and as we can make a good observation on this one, it's not working. I mean, it's not working to build our, our culture, our people. It's not working. Division is just not working for us. So I believe God has provided us ways to, to come together. And I think Jesus, when Jesus prayed, John 17, he asked the Father to let the people be one and to, to come together as one. And so unit, how, how do we bring together then unity? And that's when uh, Eric and I began to dialogue, and Eric was like, you know, unity is the answer, but how do we bring a people together? And I, and I don't believe that we just sit back and wait on God to do it. And so in this particular deal, uh, we just felt like that, what do we have? What do we have to start with? You know, it's, a, it's God who asked Moses, uh, what do you have? And, you know, Moses would respond, I have this staff. Well, we feel like what we have is trash. And so we began to see what is the staff then in our hand? What is it that we have? And so trash is what we have, plenty of it. There's no shortage. Uh, yeah, that's true. But at the same time, this particular mission is not like we're, it's not as if we're going to get it perfectly correct. But we, we as a pe the people of God feel like we're just like looking around to see how we can get involved where God's working. God's had a vision for this place forever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I moved my family back here in, in the year 2001. Uh, because of vision for this place, uh, there, there's hope. And 
and and our, our hope comes from inside it comes from who God is and our relationship with him it's not born out of what we have or lack uh, it, it, it comes out of what we are on the inside I think that there's a, a uniqueness about the people of our region I mean we're the only one of the only few people who hasn't kicked God out of our local governments we still acknowledge God we still pray before you know gatherings um, and I don't necessarily think that we're going to stick to just clean mingo I think it's going to spread all over um, I think if if we can unite as a church and forget about the uh, name over the door I think that we can accomplish anything I agree with that 100 percent man I've uh, working with a group called uh, um, healthy mind bodies and spirits so I'm trying to get all the different churches different denominations together just to work on different causes you know, no specific cause, but just getting the churches together. You know, me and Joey had a conversation the other night that regardless, churches are the cornerstone of the community. Yep. And you, you know what still I think is great about this community is that regardless how bad it may seem sometimes, it's still like we're one big family. Right. You know what I'm yep. saying? It don't matter who you are, where you're from. You know, you can see somebody, say, in Atlanta from here that you might not hardly speak to, and y'all run up and hug each other like yep. you first cousins. Yeah. You know, that's one thing I, I really respect about this area. How do you think the youth can learn from uh, Clean Mingo? Well, I, I have a 12 year old and a nine year old. Um, and and when we when we took them out to pick up trash, uh, they told us after the first time that it, it, it helped them to see it and not just ignore it. Um, it helped them to also see the beauty that can be without it. So without the trash, in other words, uh, when you pick it up, you see you see nice lush green grass and you see a, a good looking road that you're driving along. Otherwise, you know you got you got it's 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 there, but it's it's littered with all these bottles and and other things. But uh, stewardship for the next generation, you know these these kids are the ones that are up and coming in this region, and I think we need to as this in this generation we need to lead them lead them in that lead them into good stewardship, and not just that, but you know, we, we in this region have come to a, to a point where trusting ourselves is not, is not the answer. It's not an answer. It's not the option. You know, what I want my kids to see is my life of faith. Um, I mean, my, my daughter, as I understand it, has been in the, in the school bathroom crying before just at the thought that mommy and daddy might have to leave the region, move away. Uh, with everybody losing jobs and, and, you know, any kind of news that circulates like that causes them to think, oh, we got to go, we got to leave. Um, but it, then I come home from work only to explain, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight. We, we, we're not trusting ourselves here. And um, so they see this walk of faith. And, and, and you know, I, I said this before, and I think it stands true, especially coming out of last fall, um, trust uh, you know, trust in God. We trust is on our money. I think that's ironic, uh, because I believe the money is, began, is what we now trust in as a people. I mean, a, across the nation, and and I think God is calling His people, especially in this region, back to a trust wholeheartedly in Him. And and uh, Clean Mingo is a is sort of a picture of that, to, a faith statement to say we don't we don't just trust in what what we see we don't trust in what our paychecks i don't live by my paycheck i live by faith in my god who supplies the faith the, the paycheck and supplies all my needs and and not just all my needs according to my paycheck or my bank account but all my needs according to his riches in glory and so my life should be then lived out that way uh not like oh poor me i'm worried about my job and no, i'm not worried about that i'm worried about uh being faithful to the lord and moving where he is and i want my kids to see that I want other kids to see that, and I'm not ashamed to tell them. And we walk with a lot of teenagers these days that, that hang out with uh, my kids. And so they get this. They get this faith walk that we're trusting, and we're being, uh, we're being faithful to where we live, to take care of what we have, and to say we're not, we're, we're not called to this. We're not going to live eternally in trash, and we're not going to put up with it now. I believe that um, we need to uh, lead our children by example. Uh, if you look at it on the other end, throwing out trash is kind of a learned behavior. You see your mom and dad doing it, you're going to do it too. And I think that's culminated over the years and now that's, that's what you get with, you know, pretty much 
this generation now that that are doing it. But I think if uh, we can uh, lead our children by example, and um, we could actually, you know, show them the beauty of this area, mm -hmm. and um, let them grow up in a beautiful place to where people, and you, you get tourism coming in. Right now, you know, I, I talked to a, uh, a guy that was coming and riding the trails, and he was telling me that, you know, the brochures were beautiful, you know. He looked at the brochures and he came in and he said, now don't, don't get me wrong. He said, when I go out in the mountains, it's beautiful. He said, but when I get down in your valleys, <clears throat> all I see is trash. I'm not, I know I'm not the only person that thinks that as the generations go on, it's like, the kids are getting worse and everything's getting worse. The crimes, just people's thought process. It's like people don't care. Not just about you or me, but about anything anymore. You know, a lot of young kids don't care. And that's why, uh, you know, I love seeing what you guys do with the youth and, and all that stuff, man. But if we can retrain the kids yeah. to care, to think about their brother, think about their sister or friend, cause people they don't even know, you know, to actually care about people and people's feelings, man, it go a long way. Well, I think the uh, with the you know when you think about the kids, um, and and the natural the natural thing is that whatever we pass down continues until somebody says this is this has got to stop, and and I, I you know when it, when I think about kids and you always think about how people you know hurt people I mean people that hurt others are themselves hurt, and sometimes. When you look at how, and again, this is a bigger study than, than I'm even willing to, to deal with uh, or talk about, uh, but when you think about the way families have been so disrupted in our culture, uh, we're perpetuating a culture of pain. And when you live out that much pain, it's, it's not going to, uh, the pain has to go somewhere. And so we're, we're showing it in drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and, and violence and other ways. So at some point, we as, we as a generation have to say no more. And what we're perpetuating down to the kids is a different mindset. When, when, the, when the surrounding regions, surrounding counties, surrounding states say, God is in West Virginia, that's a successful clean mingo. When God's fame goes from sea to shining sea, that's a successful clean mingo. Awesome. So you guys, y'all hear it. You don't have to contact anybody. If you want to be part of Clean Mingo, you can start right now. You can go out, pick up trash, hashtag it. You can tag me in it. I send it to Joy, whatever it takes. You don't have to contact anybody to be a part of Clean Mingo. You already are a part if you go out and pick up a little trash. Yeah. But once again, I want to thank Joy and uh, Eric for coming to visit us and sharing their story and their vision with us. Um, come back after the break. We have Mr. Alexis Batalza is going to tell us how to go from lazy to running crazy. Great, guys. Welcome back, guys, to uh, Relate with Nate. We got my homeboy here, Mr. Alexis Batalza. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show, Alexis. Uh, Alexis is not only my co-worker, he's, really, he's one of my really, really good friends, um, almost like family. Um, can you tell our fans where you work and what you do, yeah. Alexis? I, am, uh, I work at the Wimson Health and Wellness Center. I am the active living coordinator over there. So, so I help put on um, monthly 5K races, and I help coordinate walking competitions, such as the Lunch Walk Challenge and the uh, Healthy Feud that takes place in the spring, the lunch walk, and then the uh, healthy food takes place in the fall. Uh, we also do the uh, walk with ease, which works with people of all ages. Um, we do like stretching exercises, um, chair exercises, and hopefully do some yoga exercises, chair yoga exercises um, real soon. Um, we also, I also do a lot of uh, piggybacking from our other programs that we do with healthy eating, um, your stuff, volunteerism, and all the, any of the uh, entrepreneurship stuff. That's awesome. Um, let me ask you a question, Alexis. Um, how could somebody like me who's lazy, I don't like to run, only time I would run is if the law or the Klan was chasing <laughs> me. So how could somebody like me get involved with, uh, you know, start out from nothing to running 5Ks and marathons? Well, I think with the, um, with the Lunch Walk Challenge and the Healthy Feud, I always think with these programs that we put out there, um, you can use them as a short-term goals. 
Um, the way we track people with that program is um, you can use your your phones. You can use um, just different phone apps we, you, that you have. Um, you can do uh, pedometers. We have pedometers that we provide for people, and that tracks your mileage or steps. Um, yeah, our pedometers we never get back. If you got some of our <laughs> pedometers, we want them back, guys. <laughs> we're not giving them away. We just let you use them. And we have a <laughs> <laughs> and we have an online system, so it's pretty easy to track your. Uh, your progress throughout the uh, programs. So usually the programs are like 10 to 12 weeks. Um, the cool thing with the Healthy Feud is 100, it's 100 days, so it's 15 weeks. So it starts in the late summer into um, December itself. So like the Healthy Feud guys, for you who are not, not familiar, is you walk 100 miles in 100 days. It sounds like a whole bunch, but most people walk two or three miles just at work, not even realizing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I think it's pretty unique. Um, our program has grown through the past couple of years. Uh, this is the Lunch Walk Challenge. We, this is the fifth year of the program. And this year we got about 600 participants. That's pretty um, cool. About almost, I, mean, I think we do have about 80 teams right now. From all over the country, yeah. too, right? Yeah, so okay. we, got, we, did, we reach out everyone. So tell us, how far do you walk in the Lunch Walk program? Uh, for the Lunch Walk program, our goal is to reach the western coast of California. So we start from here at Williamson, and just like eh, all the way down to excuse <laughs> to me, the Western could you please tell me that term again? <laughs> that, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment with Alexis, guys. <laughs> Never. Um, can you tell me what got you into uh, you know like the job you're doing and being healthy and running and exercising? What what started that? Uh, this happened. Um, Let's just start from the beginning, really. I, I well, hold on, guys, before he answers that question. <laughs> I have a picture of Alexis before he started all that. Uh, some of you might remember, might not remember, but this is, it's Alexis. <laughs> you can see it. It's Alexis. <laughs> so it don't even look like the same guy. Now we'll let him tell the story why and how he got to where he is now. So... Yeah, let's just start from the beginning. Um, I always struggled with my weight when I was younger. And, um, and that picture there you see, that was back in the, the spring of 2008. Um, a friend of ours passed away and we all got in a group photo with our family and friends. And when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, I had to do something about this. Um, even with my, or my family's uh, background history with health, um, when my dad got sick, um, he had the complications from diabetes what's went off more with like open heart surgery, all these just different complications that went on through his life. And I wanted to be more health conscious after that. And um, I started eating a little better and started walking. I started running a little more, uh, then I got injured. <laughs> so my, my thing is, uh, my advice to you guys is uh, don't try to go out too fast. You gotta be, you gotta take everything slow take your time with it and be consistent with it um, because you don't want to be struggling with like say shin splints and that's a that's an awful yeah, awful I had experience shin all through high school man yeah. so yeah so I built up real slow I did like one two three miles or day, a day walking at our flood wall back here in West Williamson and eventually I got to the point like um, you know I want to start running and running is like one thing I never liked so it was a love hate relationship um, once I got to the feel of it consistently, you know, run, walk, run, walk, I used some of the, uh, the cement blocks there, the cement benches, as like to guide me. Like, I'm going to run to this spot, I'm going to run to this spot. And that helped me kind of build my confidence. And eventually I ran into a mile and I was just like feeling great. And eventually one mile, two miles, three miles, all the way to six miles. So like every day I would pass the same people to see me like have changed throughout those past couple months and um, see me uh, drop the weight. So by the end of the year of uh, 2008, I was weighing, um, well, I was weighing 250 pounds in that photo. And at the end of the year, I was weighing about 199. Wow, man. And I mean, that's really inspiring. I mean, like you were saying, people like me, I would think I would have to just go out and take off running and run two or three miles. Yeah. And I mean, that makes sense what you've done, mm -hmm. you know, stair steps. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people fail at running because of that reason. They get mm -hmm. out and say, oh, I'm going to go run a 5K. I'm going to go run this, go run that. And they're unsuccessful, and then they give up. Well, that's the thing is, like I was saying, is I got injured, and I took my time with it, and I didn't want to 
go over the same problems I did. So just slowly build up the muscles in my body because I wasn't used to it. And yeah, like I said, I lost that weight. And that following year in 2009, a friend of mine came over to me at church to say, hey, you want to sign up for the Half and McCoy Marathon? I was like, dude, you're crazy. So I said, yes, let's do it. And you know, I continued the same training, running you know, like six miles a day, every day. Uh, eventually I met some people like Dave Hatfield, Harold Osborne, really, really good friends of mine. And um, Harold helped me out a lot um, with advice and getting me to run <laughs> a long run, which uh, a long distance run is what's called, going out there running 12 miles before this race. Um, the race I was running is called a half marathon. It's like 13.1 miles. And um, when June came around, I was getting ready for it. My friend who you know, mentioned, hey, let's run this race, he backed out. Of course, that made me mad, but eh, I wanted to do it. Hey, Alexis, you've never been mad. <laughs> I've never right. seen you mad at nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when that happened in uh, June 2009, of course, I see all these people from around our, the country, the world, nervous as heck. Um, I had like my, my younger sister, some friends helped me out along the course, which was great. And then I saw Harold on the, at the start of the line and we ran together and I didn't even know what to expect. And you know, with all this running, it's, it's changed my life. Um, I mean, through these past couple of years from, from that time on, when dad got sick to like now, I mean, struggled a lot with a lot of sickness, both my parents, um, unfortunately they passed away now. But um, you know, the, our, the calling was um, helping the community. And you know, with the Wimson Health and Wellness Center, they were looking for uh, a health and wellness promoter back in um, the summer of 2012. And um, they asked me if I wanted to be a part of it to help out within the schools. And I said yes. And uh, I got hired on with them, um, with a, a good friend of ours, Jenny Hudson. And um, we were both the health and wellness promoters there. And of course, from there on, we worked you know, within the community, which I never expected myself to do so much within the community. Um, and I'm thankful for it. I mean, I just feel great to see people believe in me and something that you know, I do adore and love with the running and seeing now people out there being uh, consistent with it, passionate. Um, what's the other word I'm looking for is uh, contagious is key and um now, i can say from what i've seen um i've been back here maybe three years like <clears throat> when i live here nobody was running yeah. nobody was running at all now you see 30 people out a day just random places running not yeah. all together and a lot of that has to do with you know seeing you and your story and some of the things you have going on like i know i can relate to a lot of people out there that's been struggling with their own weight i mean our high um i guess gender wise when you look at it like the races is uh women and women are out there running and just well they start as walkers and then into the running itself and now they're all running uh you know the 5ks 10ks half marathons and marathons so we've seen a lot of people grow here in the past four years i mean the, the club that i'm involved with is called the uh, tug valley road runners club um i'm the president of that club now president <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> and um just seeing this group grow within the community and other communities. I mean, they're all like ambassadors to what we do and then just spreading the word. Awesome. Um, I know it's been a tough year for you, you know. Uh, how, how did you keep on, keeping on? You know, how did you keep on with the positiveness, keep on with the exercising and, you know, stay positive? Um, I remember in um, you know, the last interview there was Joey, I uh, heard him say hope and I always, preach as much with hope to keep me going. I mean, when dad was sick, you know, I just, it was rough times, it was overwhelming. We didn't, we didn't know what to expect through that time. And then when mom got sick, I mean, I always believed that, you know, she's gonna get through this, get through this. Unfortunately, you know, she passed, but it still brought that hope. And that hope brought me deep down in my heart with this community, because I've stayed here in this community for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just like a lot of people, you know, they left, I stayed, and tended to my family. And, you know, I've seen a lot through that. And I think it made me a much stronger person uh, to get me where I'm at right now. I know, uh, I've been through the struggle too. Like, when my father passed away, it was like, almost instantly, it was like a life-changing 
experience because not saying that I was in a whole bunch of stuff I shouldn't have been in, but I didn't feel like I was where I should have been uh, financially, mentally, or uh, anywhere in my life. So it was almost like when my father, when after he passed away, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna let my mother leave this earth and I still have that same feeling. So even though that was definitely the worst thing, the most, tra tra uh, the biggest tragedy, yes, excuse mean. me, that's ever happened in my life, somehow I seem to pull some positiveness out of it, man. And I think, it seems like to with me, that's where you're going with it too. I mean, I know you have rough days, man. Um, you know, because I'm with you every day. Yeah. And I, I really admire your strength. I really admire how you lead people and how you uh, motivate people, man, to just keep it moving. Uh, yeah. That's really great. I, mean, I believe, too, is, um, you know, during those tough times, you got to look deep down and uh, love yourself more. I mean, I think people will see that. And it kind of radiates, shines upon you, but upon all of them. So, yeah, the work that we're doing here has been fantastic. I never have a problem with loving myself more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what events or races do you have going on now that people can get involved in or things you have coming up that yeah. people can get involved um, in? You know, right now, currently, we still have the Lunch Walk Challenge. It's happening. Uh, we're in the sixth week of the program. People can still sign up. I mean, I don't want to put a deadline on that, especially on your health. You know, we got a, we got a, a race coming up in May. Um, It'll be the first day uh, opening of our farmer's market, and um, we're working with the uh, Relay for Life uh, ARH. So it'll be a good collaboration right there, and with the Lunch Ball Challenge um, th the last week of the program. So get, like a big celebration. And then our big one, of course, is the uh, Half of McCoy Marathon in June, June 11th. That's big time, big Half time, of McCoy. Man. People from all over the world come to this area to run one of the top races in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, this been in magazines, People talking about it on TV. You yeah, know? it's been uh, it's been uh, overwhelming, but we're proud of, of all the um, the love that we're getting. All right, Alexis, guys, uh, appreciate you coming on my show. Thank you, man. Um, I have this thing where I always like to challenge somebody to something on on every episode. I was going to challenge Alexis to a 5K, but he'd I mean there'd be no contest. I'd smoke him. Then I was going to ask him to do some kind of trivia. There'd be no contest either. So, well, actually, he might beat me in trivia, but racing, there's no chance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to challenge Alexis since he thinks he's in better shape than me to a boxing match. One-on-one, -on -one, a mano a mano, I'm going to kick his butt. And I hope we can still be friends after this. So stay tuned. You never know what you might do. say thank you guys for watching my show uh, we really appreciate it I want to thank you to the studio audience I want to say thank you to my awesome guests Joy Eli Eric Sherrill Mr. Alexis the running fool Batalza I want to give a shout out to Southern we appreciate the use of your facilities and I want to say a big thank you to my director slash producer Mr. Joy Ferris and we also have a few events that are coming up soon we got the Cold Fields Got Talent guys the biggest talent show in the area be there or be square, May the 20th and 21st. We also have a cooking class at the Wimson Pool, April the 14th and April the 28th. And we also have intramurals signups right now. You can call us at 304-235-3400. Once again, we appreciate you watching the show. One time for your mind. Give me two if you're true. Holler at your boy. You know how we do. Yeah. <laughs>